thought that was a game of two teams that have um, thought they played. Both teams played pretty hard, competitive game. Um, credit goes to uh, Coach Eilert and his staff. I thought they were able to get a few more easier buckets in the second half than we were able to manufacture. Um, thought defensively we had a couple extra turnovers, a little bit out of character there. Um, and, 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 you know, I thought we had a really good stretch in the first half. I think we should have had a bigger cushion going into halftime. If you got a bigger cushion at halftime, um, that run that they make, right, they score 33 points in the, in the first half and 17 in the first four minutes. <laughs> so half of what they did in the first half, they did in the first four minutes. I thought that was a massive stretch in the game. So, um, and then we're, you know, we're kind of playing catch-up. I thought we did a good job late with some trapping action, uh, putting some pressure on them, but uh, did not get quite what we wanted to get and what we came to Morgantown to get, which was a win. Greg Hunter, Blue so, and Gold <laughs> News, first question. So, Zach, so you guys, and despite their early success in the second half, you guys have it tied at 48-48. Then they yeah. had another run. What, what was the key there? I, you know, I can't recall everything right now, but I just think we didn't defend. I mean, that, that number, we've been pretty good defensively, 53% in the second half. I thought they had some step-up ball screens that they haven't run a ton of. Um, to this point towards the outside and uh, certainly Edwards if you throw it close to the rim it's a it's a very accurate play um, it's either going to go in or he's going to dunk it and um, I thought he did a, a, a very nice job uh, getting Jesse some action going to the rim so uh, put us in some hard spots and, and we didn't defend quite like we have other times so you said last night when we talked to you, it's, it was another game. Did it, did it feel like it? Did it ever feel like something different for you coming home? It did not. It did not. Um, you know, I took a minute to walk around the call scene when I got in just to, you know, appreciate that moment. But um, when you're 48 hours outside from an opponent, everything's pretty much set in stone, what you're going to do, what you're going to watch, what you're going to study. Um, and then you get on the bus and, and lock in on a few more things. Night before meal is going to involve some stuff. Um, so just tried to stay in that routine. Um, I thought our guys did a great job. We got a couple guys, Yame Butler from Maryland, Garfield Turner, uh, has a boatload of family here today. And uh, so I thought, you know, I thought our team played and competed really hard. For those of you that haven't seen us play, I think uh, that effort, even down to the very end, forced a couple turnovers, a couple helium passes that went into the student section. I thought we did a good job with that. But... Um, we just didn't quite get a couple made buckets enough. I thought they took away some threes and then, you know, had a couple unfortunate calls that the ball didn't bounce our way. Coach, when you think back to the, the, the coaching journey you've been on to the days here as an administrative guy, uh, 14 years now as a head coach, what, um, where, I mean, where, where has that taken you as far as, you know, just growing up through, through the business, so to speak? I, I guess it's taken me to a couple of different places, right? It's almost like we've been a military family to have been, uh, you know, Ithaca, New York, to to Rock Hill, South Carolina, to Morgantown, to Cornell, to West Point, to Philadelphia. That's, I guess, that's the, you know, the <laughs> actual answer. But I, I just think I, the path you have and the people you come in contact with, wherever you are, um, you can learn so much from. And I think that my time here. Uh, with Coach Beeline and his staff and everyone that was a part of the university at that time, it was an incredible learning experience uh, for me. And um, so very thankful for that. So obviously don't take a loss, you know, uh, lightly. Not but, at all. <laughs> but considering what you guys did last Saturday and then going toe-to-toe -to -toe on the road with another Power Five, um, do you, what's that say about Drexel right now in the season? Uh, I think – I think we're doing what we expected to do in terms of competition. I think we expect to win these games. We came in, I thought our mindset, I thought our approach all day yesterday was, was very businesslike. So um, it's disappointing. Frankly, it's disappointing because I think uh, if you play your absolute best and the ball doesn't roll on the rim or rolls off or something happens, understandable. But I don't know that we played our absolute best. And I think that's what will that's what'll bother our guys and our staff, and we'll have to learn from it. We've got a week off until – We've got a home game against Albany, and I think they have had some good wins, and we need to be ready to play. So, um, you know, we're in the Coastal Athletic Association, tough league. Wilmington beat Kentucky. Um, 
you guys saw Monmouth. You're well aware of what they're capable of doing. Um, and that doesn't mention Charleston, who won 31 games last year. Um, it's, it's a tough league. It's been a, historically a one-bid league. Um, I'd love for it not to be. But uh, we're going to have to clean up a few things and then be ready for league play um, as the calendar turns to January. But we've got a few more games until then. The situation of West Virginia, is this a one-time kind of buy game, or is this a two-for-one? Or No, uh, I would love for it to be a two-for-one sure, if, sure. um, if, if you're going to come to Philadelphia. Uh, no, it's uh, it was it was a one-time game, yeah. Zach, you mentioned um, the ball screen, step-in stuff, shots like that. I'm guessing you watched four or five games of theirs, right? A lot. Um, okay. Some of their evolution of, like, just – kind of thrown together at the start of the year with the roster and what they dealt with and figuring things out. How have you seen them evolve or patch things up or protect weaknesses or, or even accentuate strengths? No, I just think it's a credit to Coach Eilert and his staff. You know, they're, uh, they're kind of playing the cards they've been dealt, not necessarily the cards that they selected in the recruiting process. And, uh, you know, I mentioned something to, to Raekwon Battle there. I hope that that works out for him. I think you're going to get another player t next game. Um, and I think that this team probably will be a different team um, and, and look and feel differently, hopefully, um, for West Virginia moving forward in a couple weeks. Is it tricky at all to prepare for a team like that? Like, you don't have a whole lot of idea of like, what a Cook can do because he's only played one game and they are trying to... He played one game here. He's played at Georgetown. Um, you know, the, the made three was not a surprise. I, I think you guys saw that three. He took... What did he take? Two? Yeah. He took two. I thought... No, he made one. He took one. Right, but I thought it was heavily contested. Um, you know, the guy that probably hit one that surprised me a little bit was 24. Um, he was one for three on the season, hadn't taken a bunch, hadn't really looked at the rim. Um, but if you look at 13 of Cook, um, his numbers at Georgetown, I think he took 85 threes last year. So um, we had an awareness that he was capable of doing that, and we needed to respect that. I thought Amari uh, really had a good game. That was a shot that was altered. I mean, he was up there. The guy hit a shot, and I think that that's really – the difference in this game probably was, you know, they hit seven threes. They haven't haven't done that a bunch in other games, and uh, we only hit five. So, aside from the two other things we've talked about, the start in the second half and the turnovers, and then the threes. Um, listen, it's a great environment, great game. We came up a little short. I think we're capable of playing better, and that that's what will drive and propel our staff and our guys, and we go from there. A few years ago, when you guys had that really good run in the CA tournament, yep. got, got to the NCAA. Mm -hmm. um, since then, the the game of college athletics has completely changed, and I'm just kind of wondering. Might be the biggest understatement of the day. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, uh, since then, uh, how do you adjust? At you know, at, at a smaller level, and then you know, you you've created that momentum, got a little something going. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the game changes. Yeah, I would say it takes a village, right? It's not it's not just the head coach, not the staff. It's the administration, and, and, and you adapt or you, you kind of die on the vine. I'm thankful for the leadership and support we have at Drexel uh, with our president, and President Fry and um, Maisha Kelly, that we're, we're adapting to the, to the new landscape and the ever-changing landscape. Uh, on Monday, right after we played Villanova, we were able to roll out a collective, and certainly we'll see what that does. But... Um, it's a new world, and uh, you got to adapt to it. Doesn't mean we like it. Doesn't mean it's not the the purest sense of what we all signed up to do. But uh, we've got some really special guys in that locker room. They decided to come back. I'm excited for what we can do. Today wasn't our best showing, and, and we'll learn from it. But um, as long as you love those guys in the locker room and you do everything you can to help them be at their best, and then uh, you kind of go where it, where it takes you from there. Coach, so. you mentioned uh, Amari in passing. He had a double-double. He was kind of battling with Edwards all day. How do you think he matched up with Edwards in, in that matchup there? Yeah, not the first matchup. Uh, we played Syracuse two years ago in our opening game after going to the tournament, and they, they uh, went head-to-head -head there a little bit. So Amari was coming off the bench at that time. I thought that was a great matchup, um, you know, the numbers-wise, uh, about the same. Uh, Amari is a really good passer. He infects the game so many ways other than scoring. Um, that sometimes that can slide by. Um, so he had a couple of passes, didn't lead to assist today because the shots were missed. Or defensively, I thought he was very active, very active. I don't know what he had. Block shot says one. I would say that he altered five or six others, right? And that's what you want in a big guy. He was active today. He was active. We keep track of how many times we get three stops in a row. We call them bricks. Got kind of a brick wall building in our office and in the locker room. And 
thought we had a, a decent number of bricks today. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys, thanks. Uh, 2 o'clock next Saturday, Albany, if you want to come to Philly. <laughs> Love to have you.